I think this is a good natural follow-on from what Hugh was talking about. Um, it's a scheme that we run, and I work for a body called the Heritage Council. We're different from where Hugh works. Um, we're a government agency. We're under the aegis or the remit of Hugh's department. Um, we were set up in 1995 um, by the government minister at the time, who's now our president, Michael De Higgins. And we were set up to give policy advice to the minister for, for heritage. Um, and also to provide grants. And what the scheme I'm going to talk about this afternoon is it's effectively a grant scheme, but it has a policy element to it as well. And we'll see what we can draw out of that in terms of um, what makes it successful. Um, uh, this is really a joint paper between me and my colleague Anna. Anna does 99.9% of the work on this scheme. I help her a little bit. She couldn't make it and um, she asked me to give it. Um, so I can't claim any credit for what I'm about to tell you about. It's all Anna's doing. Um, the scheme is really about these traditional little farm buildings here. The lot and litter, the Irish landscape. They're very humble, they're unassuming and they're vernacular. Um, built of very simple materials. Um, this is Anna here in grey. Um, Although she's talking to three elderly male farmers, and in a sense, that's the key audience. They're the key par partitioners or practitioners in this scheme. Um, it works, a lot of it, you can say she's not here, she's got embarrassed. A lot of it works because of her and a particular ethos. Um, she's firm when she has to be. Um, she's fair, uh, very fair, ensuring equality in the scheme. Um, but she's also have to have a bit of fun as well, um, which I think is really important because a lot of, certainly in Ireland, a lot of what we do is very much determined by the relationships, very much from Hugh's point. The, the kind of relationships that you have with people, it's, it's that kind of society. Um, it's a, a network society, I suppose. Um, the actual buildings themselves, um, they look very simple and very humble, but they embody a huge amount of wisdom in their own way. And this is one of Anna's favorite books. It's a book called, um, I Could Read the Sky. I'll just leave it there, have a read of it. Will I go on? Um, so I think the point there is that they're very simple, humble, unassuming structures, but that they embody, I suppose as archaeologists, we can understand a huge amount of cultural information and meaning at the same time. And we shouldn't really dismiss them as simple or unassuming. And I suppose that's the essence of, of vernacular. Um, the scheme itself, um, they apply, they apply to the Heritage Council. Um, and it's interesting, we, we've never gone online with this scheme. It's still done very much on hard copy, hard applications. Um, and the reason is when you see the applications that come in, they come in from parts of the country, parts of the country where simply there isn't sufficient broadband, um, or people are more comfortable in forms. And when you assess um, and you're looking at the actual applications, um, you'll see the backs of serial boxes used to affix photographs to, um, so it's very, it's still very paper, um, still very straightforward. Um, but the ethos is that um, the farmer can either hire somebody to do the work or he can do some of the work himself. But the condition is that there's a conservation supervisor involved. Um, so in some cases, um, this particular structure, um, the farmer did a lot of the actual masonry repointing work himself obviously with supervision, and when they looked at it, it was found that there was a clay-bonded mortar 
So there's a little bit of testing. And again, all the materials were found to be local. Um, it's about sharing experience and expertise. So there's the farmer. And a lot of, a lot of these farmers embody these skills. They might have forgotten some of them, but they're there with a the conservation supervisor just talking their way through it. Um, again, very humble buildings. Um, the whole ethos of the scheme is as little as possible. Um, so in this case, it's just it's patch pointing, some roof repairs, some joinery. Um, so it's, it's very much the minimalist form of intervention. Um, the idea is to retain local distinctiveness as well. I think this is in County Clare. You can see the local, again, it's the whole idea of vernacular. Um, very much a local form of building material. These heavy slates used to, to, to roof it. Um, again, very humble. Um, again, just about retaining that. Um, and in a way, it's a wonder that that roof survived because so much of it was would have been replaced with galvanize in the, the 1960s onwards. Um, this is parging, um, where you get glass the underside of the slates. Um, this roof is actually in really good condition, so it was simply a matter of doing some very small scale repairs to maintain and retain that. And the farmer actually remembered seeing that done when he was younger and was able to pick it up again. Um, it encourages traditional craft skills as well, so blacksmith forged uh, iron work. Um, upskilling, the farmer here actually did a lot of the repointing himself. So he's simply raking it out, again supervised, um, and, and doing the repointing on, on this structure. Um, and there's a huge element of transmission in this. Um, so again, in this one, you can see it's just patch pointing, so it's not complete repointing. So, um, and then the roof is fixed and some joinery, but you can see the pride just between these, this father and son. Um, so there's an element of transmission there. Um, in terms of this case study, um, again, done to retain local distinctiveness. Now the speaker notes haven't shown up for me here, so I'm not going to give you the full detail on the, on the case study. Um, there's also an element of training. Um, so here are a bunch of participants being trained in the use of mixing of line water. Um, so Anna regularly organizes training events for them as well. And sometimes you think that the networking and just the sociability of it is, is what makes it quite popular as well. So in terms of numbers, um, since 2009, 540 buildings have been granted. This does not include this year. So by the end of this year, probably we'll be 600 buildings. Um, the grants vary for the first few years, 5,000 to 25,000, um, then 4,000 to 20,000. So in the gloss scheme that you mentioned, we're back to about four to 25,000. Now the typical payment in these schemes is about eight to 9,000, I think. Um, so it's quite, it's quite attractive. Um, so the, the, for the kind of measures that you talked about, the typical payment is eight to nine. So if you have a good farm complex, you can actually get good grant incentives uh, through this scheme. So it is popular. Um, the assessments are always way oversubscribed by about four to one. So for every four, you might only fund one. Um, the assessments themselves are done on the basis of value for money, the quality of the works proposed, the heritage value of the site as well. Um, and it, it's a very interesting process going through those assessments. Um, I think what's really important is that it's a signal to the valuing of such heritage from the state. Um, this was a phone call conversation and it took with a farmer. When I took over this farm from my father, everyone told me to knock down those old buildings. I just couldn't do it. Just the idea that there's a grant now available to have me maintain them means that I was right not to toss them, to get rid of them. Uh, that makes me happy. So I think it's a signal from the state that these are actually important parts of our heritage. Um, so I think this is the last slide. So why does this work? Um, I think in the first instance, um, the Department of Agriculture, it's easily quantifiable. Um, there are certain numbers of projects that are done every year. Um, in terms of governance, um, the assessment and approval is carried out by the agency that I work for, the Heritage Council. Um, the project management is done by Anna, working in the Heritage Council. Um, so the Department of Agriculture feels that there's assistance, there's, there's help there, but that crucially there's a governance. Sort of, 
um, a way of assuring quality. And that quality goes from assessment to professional supervision by a conservation professional. Um, all offers are approved by our board. Um, and when the project has been through its final phases, um, there's a certificate of completion issued, and then a request for, uh, a request for payment is issued to the Department of Agriculture. They then release the payment. Um, but I think what's really interesting as well is it's generally non-designated heritage. Um, it's not, it's none of the 120,000 in the vast majority of cases that Hugh talked about. Um, so there's a perception for some people that it, there's less red tape. Um, I think another key factor is that there's a really strong personal or family connection between farmers and some of these buildings. Um, so it's very much personal heritage. And they, you know, their father might have roofed it in the 50s or 60s. Um, they remember as a child leading livestock in and out or storing material in it. So it is very much personal heritage for a lot of the practitioners. Financially, it's attractive as well. Um, and then also it allows for work to be carried out by owners. And then training and networking opportunities. Um, I think when you look at some of the participants in this game, they're men in their 40s, 50s, 60s. Rural isolation is actually a really uh, important issue. And I think a lot of this just taps into um, networking opportunities. Um, we, we would always say that in rural communities in particular, heritage is a form of social glue brings people together. So there's certainly an aspect of that in this scheme as well. Um, and then I didn't put it up on the slide. Somebody um, told me a number of years ago um, that the golden rule of heritage management is to spend other people's money. Um, so in a sense, it's spending EU money and certainly Irish money as well, but from another government department on heritage. Um, and it, it worked pretty well from, from that point of view. Thank you.